Peter Vaughan and on this very much scarf, coat, gloves and hat kind of day I'm at Smeaton Lakes near Newark with this Giotti line, a brand new Ford Transit based low profile motorhome, full four berth, three and a half tonne vehicle that anyone can drive from Brown Hills just down the road again in Newark. Now this is a new brand for Brown Hills Giotti line and um, part of the Rapido group so extending their portfolio of brands because they already include Itinio and Rapido itself but I should tell you a bit more about Giotti line. Now I'm guessing that for many of you Giotti line will not be a familiar name but it's not a new mark. It has been around since 2004, so two decades on the market. It started with some rather revolutionary ideas in terms of layout with an island kitchen and some very striking Iveco-based A-classes. But these days, Giotti Line is an entry-level brand. And although it's owned by Rapido, it's not built in France at their Mayenne factory, Giotti Line hails, like virtually all Italian motorhomes, from Tuscany, the motorhome valley as they call it. And Giotti Line has been part of the Rapido group since 2016. The company investing quite significantly in updating and expanding the factory more recently. And now, well, they're expanding more into the UK. They already have around 100 dealers around Europe, but their uh, market share in, in the UK has been quite tiny up until now. But for tw 2024, Brown Hills are importing four models in the Sienna range, all Ford Transit based. You've got island bed, single bed and bunk bed layouts, two island bed versions in fact, of which this is one. And they all have a very comprehensive, exclusive to Brown Hills specification. And even more significantly, they are very keenly priced at 70995 Now for that 70995 this Sienna 397 includes everything that you see on this vehicle. Everything. There are no options packs. Well, there are. There's a security pack and a premier edition pack, but those are both included in that £70,995. And that spec goes on to include this metallic grey cab, the front fog lights, the alloy wheels, plenty of base vehicle spec included in that security pack, which we'll come on to later when we look at the Ford cab. Above the cab, there's that big over cab sunroof. And then, despite the, well, quite small, by 2024 standards, price tag. This isn't a small motorhome, 7.4 metres long, a typical coach built, 2.32 metres wide and 2.92 metres high. Seems to stand quite high off the ground, doesn't it? But it has got the wide track rear uh, axle from Ford to give it greater stability on the road. And then if we look down this near side, well, of course, on an entry-level motorhome, you've got these sort of caravan-style windows that stick proud of the bodywork. You've got a large gas compartment, easily room in there, we think, for two 13-kilo cylinders. Your toilet servicing hatch, and then your fresh water filler. Now, I'm pleased to say, in this sub-zero weather, the water tank is inboard and it's a good size too, at 100 litres. Round at the back there is a reversing camera, but if you do bump the back panel it's good to note that the bumper is a separate section. And the spec will include a bike rack as well in this package. Looking down the offside, well you've got that two lay awning and again that is standard. And then the habitation door, well the entrance is nice and low as you can see. And even better, that door has the usual fly screen and it's linked to the Ford central locking. 
other than that, well, it's just your typical modern low-profile motorhome. Perhaps a pity that they didn't merge the grey cab into the white body a bit more, but good to note that this is all glass fibre construction, the roof, the floor and the walls on the outside all glass fibre and there's a particularly impressive floor thickness of 63 millimetres. What else can I tell you? Well, there's a five year water ingress warranty on the body, but you do have to have it inspected at six months, 12 months, and then each year thereafter. And then before I show you the garage, I should just mention the wastewater tank. Well, it is underslung, of course, but it's heated and with this simple T handle to pull out and a large bore drain, it shouldn't be too long that you're spending at the wastewater outlet. Now, you don't get a spare wheel underneath this van, but you could have room to stow one because this is a really good size garage, especially for an island bed model where often the garages are relatively low. It doesn't have height adjustment. This is the size, it's a fixed size, 1.0. 01 meters high, so just over a meter high, and 89 centimeters wide. 89 centimeters wide. Just this one light and heating, of course. Fixed tie-down hooks, just one in each corner, and a main socket. In here, you've got access for servicing your trim, a combi boiler, and another enhancement of the spec is that that is the Combi 6E, so gas and electric and the more powerful Combi. Payload, well this is a three and a half ton motorhome and it's quite a big one. If you want to carry a spare wheel you'll have to think carefully because the payload is quoted in the brochure as 466 kilos but as far as we can see that is for the European specification. I'm trying to get a figure for the full UK spec one as you see it here and if I can get it before this video goes live we'll flash up that payload on the screen now. With a motorhome called Sienna, shouldn't I be testing it? somewhere warm, sunny, well, sunny here, but about minus one outside. So I'm very pleased to come in, take off my coat, and enjoy the warmth of that Combi 6 boiler. Good too, to find I've got convenient coat hooks right by the door. So in this 397 model, you have the on-trend parallel sofas or face-to-face -face lounge. It does make a, a more open feel up front. There is the alternative. You have, have the 390 model in the Sienna range, which has the sort of more European style half dinette. But this is the 397. And well, when you've spun the front seats round, they are still quite a bit lower than the rear settees. So Giotti line give you these little topper cushions which just bring the cab seats more to the level of the rear seats. You've got that really big over cab sunroof bringing lots of daylight into the front of the vehicle and that does open as well. Now the uh, continuity police might notice I've turned the vehicle round so I've got a view of the lake and now that the uh, sun is breaking through that early morning mist it's quite an attractive place to sit but back to the motorhome and well you've got this fold in half table typical um, from Rapido group because really Rapido were the ones that started it and it does make sense if you're going to have a permanent table folded in half it's out of the way and then dining, it unfolds to this gigantic table, plenty of room for four people. 
And then when you want to move the table around, you've just got this single handle at the end here, and it slides and twists and goes anywhere you want it to, really. And then locks into place. The settees, well, on the off side, it's really just a single seat. On the near side, just about uh, two people, um, but it's certainly a more spacious seat over there. But on that side, you have an opening window with the net curtain. On this side, you have just a blank wall. But if you're sitting over there looking across this way, you have at least got the window in the door. Artificial lighting, well, you've got these down lighters in the base of the drop-down bed that's above the lounge. And then I'm really pleased to see you've got these flexible reading lights with built-in USBs over the cab. A bit of ambient lighting in these overcab recesses too, but with them being so open, they're not really great for storage because things might come flying out while you're driving. So there's quite a lot to like in this lounge, and it certainly feels big enough for four people. What I'm not so keen on is perhaps the fit and finish of some of the upholstery, particularly on the cab seats where they're loose covers loose covers rather than completely re-trimmed seats and in places they don't look as tidy as perhaps they could. This is the Privilege upholstery which comes with this UK Brownhill spec. It's sort of part cloth and part vinyl. Practical enough I suppose but the real issue I have with this lounge is the height of these seats. Now I know the cab is at a higher level, but why have they made these sofas so high? My feet don't comfortably touch the, well, they don't touch the floor. Um, so anybody shorter is really going to struggle with that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a four berth van. So of course you need to be able to convert these sofas into travel seats. Now, this cushion you need, this one, you don't, and this one you don't. You've got a little folding flap at the front of the seat that just drops down and the backrest or the main part of the backrest just hinges up into place. This cushion then goes back into situ and the seat is completed with this extra cushion that you'll need to store perhaps under the bed, in the back, or in the garage. And it just slots in well, like a sort of giant headrest. And then you have quite a decent travel seat on the near side. Enough legroom, decent view out, and, well, comfortable enough. Three-point seat belt, of course. But it's not quite the same situation on the other side. So the system is the same on the other side. Again, one cushion that you don't need and one that you do. Again, a flip up backrest and this time you'll notice whereas on the near side you've got a nice big storage locker, here it's largely taken up with your 100 amp hour leisure battery. Slot the base cushion in and once again you have one of these backrest come headrest cushions to complete the seat but well this driver's seat is where I would have it for driving yeah you've got a three-point seat belt but you really haven't got a lot of legroom but no window here so you're just looking out through the gap at the side of the driver's seat. I think it will only be quite a small child that's comfortable here. And note that these rear travel seats do not have Isofix. Before I move on from the seating area, the final thing to note is the TV bracket. Now it slides out from under the fridge and then drops down so you could have the TV up here. Now the telly itself is one of the few, well probably the only thing really, that isn't included in the standard spec. 
it does sort of work okay-ish for viewing from the lounge but the only thing I can see being an issue is when the chef is working in the kitchen you might not be able to watch Bake Off on there. Then underneath your TV bracket well you've got this really family sized fridge freezer. Good sized fridge compartment at the bottom and then separate freezer section above. 149 litres combined capacity and of course it's automatic energy selection so it'll choose for itself between 12 volt mains and gas. And then above that you've got an oven. It is just an oven, no grill and well depending on your own height whether you'll think that's okay or not. If you're not very tall you might fear dropping your roast dinner on your head or something but I think for my height it's it's okay I could see that my dinner wasn't burning and well it's high but not super high of course the main galley unit is opposite the fridge and although it's not a big space it does seem to have been quite well planned got the usual large top locker. The only main socket is here but I found that my coffee machine lead would reach fine onto this workspace here. And with this split lid for the hob that actually gives you quite a reasonable amount of worktop when you're not using all three gas rings. You've also got this solid cover on the sink which gives you even more work top and because that hob is well set back it's actually quite a decent amount of preparation space. Of course you can always overflow onto the table as well. Now this sink cover is quite a hefty piece of kit and of course you can use the reverse side as a chopping board. In there well the sink has got a sort of domestic size outlet too so I was quite impressed with that and also it seems like a nice quality metal tap. Down below well you've got three decent size soft closing drawers and then alongside that quite a good size cupboard I've got room in there for my coffee machine and the gas uh, isolation taps are at the back of that cupboard. All the furniture seems quite nicely made. I quite like this gloss white finish and these chrome handles. It doesn't feel like a budget motorhome. From the kitchen area you step up into the ensuite and the bedroom beyond but you've still got 1.9 meters headroom even here. The toilet door um, does the usual swinging around and closing off the back of the van but it does seem to catch on these carpets which I have to say are a bit thin anyway. But I guess in Italy nobody specifies carpets. On the offside then you've got this good size shower, it really is a good size and you step down into it so headroom in there is even greater. You've got a little shelf for your shampoo and so on and although there's a step, quite a substantial step in the shower tray it really doesn't matter because there's sufficient space in there anyway. Bifold door of course rather than any horrible shower curtain and it's dark tinted. Just a tiny roof vent to let out any steam but two drains in the shower tray so that that is another plus and you have got a drying rail in the ceiling to dry any wet clothes or towels so yeah a really good shower compartment. Over on the other side of the van the toilet area is a good size too it's plenty big enough to use with the door closed and there's a large mirror on that door as well as a large mirror behind the basin. Ventilation is via an opening window and you've got plenty of storage both at low level and up high and this top cupboard just pushes to open there's a nice lip on that as well. So a decent space but it does, it does feel a bit I don't know a bit 
entry level in terms of motorhomes, I suppose. I think this plastic basin lets it down a little bit, and it's just a little bit lacking in frills in here, I suppose. You know, something on this wall, even if it was just a towel ring, would help to uh, lift the space a little, stop it looking quite so uh, simple. As this is a four berth van, it's important that you can close off the ensuite from the bedroom, not just using the door to shut it off from the front, because those sleeping up front may want to come through and use the shower or the loo, and, well, you might have somebody still asleep in the back. Now, it's not a proper door, but you do have, you do have a concertina screen. So at least you can have privacy. Then the bedroom itself, well, it's the usual arrangement. Island bed in the middle, wardrobes on either side, and they're a decent size. Uh, roof vent above, but you've got opening windows on either side, of course, as well. What is a bit tight is the space around the foot of the bed on the near side. It's because of this angled washroom wall. And it is, well, depending how big you are, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze to get through there. Maybe go light on the Christmas dinner. And then over on the other side, well, it's more generous space because you haven't got the full height wall. Um, you've got a small low cabinet um, and there's useful space there, not, not just extra storage, but also you can mount a TV at the foot of the bed. There's aerial and 12 volt sockets already in situ. In terms of the bed itself, it is a little higher than you'd expect, a little higher than the norm, and that's the result of that tall garage. But with steps on either side to access the bed, it really isn't an issue. What's much more important, of course, is the bed size, and that's pretty good. 1.93 metres long by 1.41 metres wide. That's six foot four by four foot seven and a half. So a decent sized bed. It's quite a firm mattress, but not unpleasantly so. There's enough to enough headroom to sort of prop yourself up in bed, if not to fully sit up. And you have got these reading lights with built-in USBs. Got there's a little bit ambient light above the top lockers as well. So it's quite a nice environment in here. What I did find is that I could make the bed rattle a bit. Now, I'm not sure what that is, but I think it's to do with the access to the storage underneath the foot of the bed, which I'll show you in just a second. So, bed comfort is pretty good. Now I've just checked regarding that noise when you turn over in bed, and it's not actually the locker at this end, it's the sprung staves under the bed, which you can actually push down and hit the wooden base underneath. They're not strong enough to support even my weight. Ah yes, that extra storage under the bed. Well, you lift up the end of the bed and yeah, it's a really generous locker space. Now there is a stay to sort of hold it up, but every time I try and use that, it just comes off in my hand. And in any case, there's nothing for the stay to locate to, to hold the bed up. But you have got a really good size space and there are these little pigeon holes at the end of the bed too. Oh, and my copy of MMM Magazine should remind you, of course, that these reviews are brought to you by MMM Magazine, Britain's leading motorhome magazine for over 50 years. Available in digital or print form from outandaboutlive.co.uk. Of course, this Sienna also has a second double bed, and for that, you just need a key and down it comes over the lounge. Now, of course, the lounge area now is pretty much out of action, but your kitchen isn't. To get out the door, though, you will do need to do a bit of a limbo, but it's doable as long as you're reasonably agile. And then, to get into the bed, 
just retrieve the ladder. Now heads go to this end of the bed because it does narrow to the foot, narrowing from 1.23 metres to 1.06 metres or four foot and half an inch down to three foot six. Bed length is 1.91 metres or six foot three. And the mattress is the same thickness as the one you get at the back. Reading lights, yeah, you've got a reading light at this end of the bed, up by the fridge. On the other side, you'd have to use the one from the cab. And ventilation, well, you've got a roof vent just here, and of course, that big opening over cab sunroof. So, so much better than trying to make some sort of bed out of lounge seats. If you need a four berth, this is a good selling point. Now the next job, of course, is to go for a drive. But before I do, I should mention some of the spec that you get on this vehicle, because right at the outset, I said that it comes with the security pack as standard. That gives you cruise control, heated windscreen, automatic lights and wipers, lane departure warning and assistance, and a pre-collision sensor. The Premier Edition pack, which is also standard with these Brown Hills vehicles, adds even more kit. So you get cab air conditioning, ESP, uh, hill holder and hill descent control, you get stop and start, you get the radio controls on your steering wheel, and um, of course the reversing camera linked to this Xzent 9 inch touchscreen. So let's go for a drive. Other things that you get as standard with this Giotti line are the 170 PS Ford engine. So that's the most powerful engine offered in the transit. Some are 155 or 130. This is the 170 horsepower engine. And you get the six-speed automatic gearbox as standard included in that. Oh, there's a nice old timer. How about that? Um, yeah, included in the price. And, well, I've driven loads of these Ford Transit recent, recently. I haven't driven this one as far as I would, would have liked, but far enough to tell that it doesn't feel a lot different. Yes, it's, it's quite a big body on this Transit, but it doesn't feel overbodied. That's, that's fine. Um, handling is good. The thing I really like about these Fords, and if you, if you watch the channel regularly, you'll, you'll know that I'm quite a fan of these Transits, and they've become more and more popular as an alternative to the Fiat Ducato. But the thing I really like is the driving position. You sit that bit lower than in a Fiat or a Peugeot. The steering wheel is car sized. And generally, it, it doesn't feel like you're driving a great big bus. Um, you know, everything's quite well laid out. As you'd expect, I suppose, with you know one of the best selling commercial vehicles. Um, rattles, yeah, there's a few rattles, but not too bad. I'm, I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised on the rattle front. Um, but there is some road noise. Now, I had this with the Swift Voyager a little while ago, and I couldn't make up my mind then whether it was road noise or wind noise, but it does seem to be road noise, and I'm, I'm not quite sure why, um, but there does does appear to be some road noise. Yeah, one, once you get up to sort of 50 miles an hour or so. Um, other than that, it drives drives really well. You've got these uh, big uh, door mirrors with the twin lenses. Um, I should have mentioned with the, the nighttime uh, filming, you've got the cab blinds as standard with this vehicle too. So it is a really good spec for your money. So it's final verdict time on this Giotti line Sienna 397. And well, you do seem to get a lot of van for your money. You won't need to think about options or accessory packs or anything like that. 
everything you get in this van is you know it's pretty much ready to drive away just add a telly and off you go and that's great especially at 70 grand or just just a fraction over so what don't I like well I'm afraid top of the list is the height of these cities they're just too high and of course if you're going to regularly carry rear passengers the one sitting here is not likely to be a happy bunny so maybe it's more of an occasional for birth and two most of the time a sort of two plus occasional grandchildren sort of van in which case well you've got your big fridge you've got your oven you've got your big comfy island bed and when you do need to take the grandchildren the drop down bed is so so easy to use if only those sofas were a bit lower and perhaps they'd made a bit more effort with the upholstery then this would be a very interesting van to consider it's not a brand you know if you'd like to stick with brands you know then maybe this won't be for you but it's certainly worth a closer look thanks ever so much for watching hope you'll continue to like and subscribe to our channel thanks very much